Today we're going to head into Genesis 4. We're going to see that Adam and Eve, after they have been banned from coming back to the Garden of Eden, have two sons, Cain and Abel. Here we're going to see the first sacrifice recorded that humans are presenting a sacrifice before the Lord. And we're going to go through Cain's sacrifices versus Abel's and what the response was from Cain when his sacrifice was not acceptable. At this point in time, the Mosaic Law was not in force, it was not given, but like we talked about last time, there was a separation from God that occurred at the fall of man. <clears throat> and so, after Adam and Eve left the garden, you still see the great mercy and grace of God that he's still with them, but there's a different relationship. There's a separation. They aren't reconciled to the glorious, amazing state they were before they sinned. And so there still needs to be some sort of reconciliation. Genesis 4, beginning at verse 3. In the course of time, Cain brought some of the fruits of the soil as an offering to the Lord. And Abel also brought an offering, fat portions from some of the firstborn of his flock. The Lord looked with favor on Abel and his offering, but on Cain and his offering, he did not look with favor. So Cain was very angry, and his face was downcast. Then the Lord said to Cain, Why are you angry? Why is your face downcast? If you do what is right, will you not be accepted? But if you do not do what is right, sin is crouching at your door. It desires to have you, but you must rule over it. Now Cain said to his brother Abel, Let's go out to the field. While they were in the field, Cain attacked his brother Abel and killed him. Then the Lord said to Cain, Where is your brother Abel? I don't know, he replied. Am I my brother's keeper? The Lord said, What have you done? Listen, your brother's blood cries out to me from the ground. Now you are under a curse and driven from the ground, which opened its mouth to receive your brother's blood from your hand. When you work the ground, it will no longer yield its crops for you, you will be a restless wanderer on the earth. Cain said to the Lord, My punishment is more than I can bear. Today you are driving me from the land, and I will be hidden from your presence. I will be a restless wanderer on the earth, and whoever finds me will kill me. But the Lord said to him, Not so. Anyone who kills Cain will suffer vengeance seven times over. Then the Lord put a mark on Cain, so that no one who found him would kill him. So Cain went out from the Lord's presence and lived in the land of Nod, east of Eden. Let's go back to the garden for a moment. So we're in the garden, and Eve is tempted by the serpent, and she believes what the serpent says. So she didn't trust the Lord. We see that Adam gave in as well because he went with his wife. He chose her over trusting the Lord and what the Lord said. They each showed where their heart's desire was. So when we look at Cain's sacrifice, why wasn't it acceptable? There are several thoughts out there on this. The one that seems accurate to me is that Cain did not trust in God. If the Lord desired animal fat, he could create a million lambs, a thousand pounds of fat, and light it on fire and breathe in that aroma. The pleasing aroma is that of one who trusts God, of one who desires him, of one who wants relationship with him. Now when Cain's face is, is downcast because of the disapproval he receives, God says that if you do what is right, will you not be accepted? So there is this hope in this sacrifice. The Mosaic law hasn't been given. But even with the fall of man, even with sin, God still desires his people. He desires their hearts. And he is allowing them to do something to come to him, to show that there is hope, that at some point there will be redemption, that they will at some point be acceptable and reconciled. But this is a showing of a hope that they can still come to him. He is still reaching out and extending his arm and extending his mercy and extending his grace. In the Mosaic Law, we see God asking for pigeons, for bread, for lambs, for bulls, for goats, etc. Does he need any of this, though? He wants our attention, our faithfulness, our remembrance. These offerings being made by mankind after the fall, but way before the Mosaic Law, showed that God was still there. 
He still loved and desired his people. He was extending an arm to them. And these sacrifices that they could bring, though they could never complete or pay the debt, these were ways where we could still come before him and show that we desired him, show that we wanted to be reconciled to him. And this created hope. It created a hope and was a glimpse of the promise that one day we will be fully acceptable and righteous in his sight.